لقد آتينا داود وسليمان علما وقال الحمد لله الذي فضلنا على كثير من عباده المؤمنين أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وحشر لسليمان جنوده من الجن والإنس والطير فهم يوزعون صدق الله العظيم Before I uh, endeavor to expound and elucidate on today's verse and the subsequent verses just a quick reflection my brother and my sister the hadith of Tirmidhi the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said one of the beauties of the Quran لا يخلق عن كثرة الرد that repetition doesn't allow for monotony Anything else you repeat, it becomes boring and monotonous. By Allah, this is a clear-cut miracle of the Qur'an. I, I cannot explain this emotion. With the grace of Allah, Allah has allowed me to teach, to com- give commentary, to read, to research, you know, over the years. But the beauty just baffles you. It's just mind-boggling. You could read and learn and, it's, and you, you can never reach the depth. You can never reach the depth. That is how profound. والله أعلم بالأسرار المودع في كتابه and only Allah knows the hidden secrets and the mysteries uh, that is in the Quran and what we know is إلا كقطرة it's just أو أو رشح أو أو كرشحة في جنب البحار it's just like a spray or a droplet compared to the ocean so okay verse 17 we are in the thick of the discussion of سليمان عليه الصلاة والسلام وَحُشِرَ لِسُلَيْمَانَ جُنُودُهُ And on a particular day, one instance, وَحُشِرَ لِسُلَيْمَانَ And for Sulaiman alayhi salam, his armies were mobilized. Okay, call the army. You got the army and then there's a coup and then this one overthrows that one and then, uh, you know, so much happening in the world. Look at the, the richness and the vastness of the army of Sulaiman alayhi salam. What did his army comprise of? What was the makeup of Wahushira li Sulaiman? And the armies of Sulaiman were, were mobilized, were gathered, were assembled. Junuduhu min al jinni wal insi wa tayri. The jinnat, the humankind, the birds, for whom you and due to their volumes and their multitudes, they were restrained. So you literally means yumna'un, they were halted. And this was an indication to the enormity and the huge nature of these armies. So, you know, when the group is very, very big and huge, then you have to stop those in front to say, let the back, you know, just uh, come up together. And then we could move together in, 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 a, in a whole group. And then probably you'll have, uh, you know, different uh, naqib and ru'asa and leaders and someone holding a banner or someone holding, um, you know, what some sign or symbol. To, to, to keep everyone together. I mean, we've seen it in, in the days of Hajj, etc., and the volumes and the groups of people, etc. So, Wahushira li Sulaimana, the armies of Sulaiman were gathered, were mobilized. Junuduhu, the plural of Jun, min al jinni. And again, the scholars say that uh, when Allah spoke, one is the humans, right? So, human number one, his was much more vast than any other king. Uh, because there is a view that is also suggestive that Sulaiman salam ruled over the entire world, though this had happened gradually. And I'll explain at some point why and how, as the scholars explain. Uh, but at one point, like Dhul Qarnayn, meaning wherever he went, he was the unanimous ruler and accepted. And many say, of course, with Sayyidina Sulaiman alayhi salam as well. So in the, in, in the sequence of the makeup of his armies, the Quran starts off with the Jinnat. مِنَ الْجِنِّ وَالْإِنسِ وَالطَّيْرِ Why jinnat and then birds afterwards? Because they say to, to control and regulate the jinnat is more difficult than domesticating birds. It's still easier. I mean, even humans can domesticate and control and regulate. Of course, one bird, two birds, it identifies with its owner. It would respond, etc. But for him, it was the whole you know, kingdom of, of, of birds, etc. But the jinnat, one jinn gets into a person and uh, you know what, his sanity is not stable. وَمِنَ الشَّيَاطِينِ مَنْ يَغُوصُونَ لَهُ وَيَعْمَلُونَ لَهُ عَمَلًا دُونَ ذَلِكَ 
And from the Jinnat who would dive down into the ocean and then they would draw for him, for him you know what, from the oysters, spills, etc. And they would engage in other uh, arduous tasks. Whatever he wants. Kaljawab is the plural of the word Jabia, right? They would make uh, sculptures, they would make uh, huge buildings, they would make huge pots. Wakudur uh, ar rasiyat. Qudur is the plural of the word qid rasiyat, firm anchored. Uh, you know, so he could he could just nominate and delegate. You know, sometimes a person says, I wish I had a jinnat in my control. I could dispatch the jinnat. Uh, or you lie down on your bed and now you need to off the light or lock the door or bolt it. And you say, oh, now who do I call? How do I do it? I wish I had control over a jinnat. Those are human things how people want, you know, and assume. Allah had given him jinnat and... Uh, they would carry out. And we would protect them. So they couldn't stray. They couldn't rebel. They couldn't transgress in any way. So there you have it. Verse 17. Speaking of the empire, the kingdom of Sayyidina Sulaiman al Islam. He had made that dua. Rabbi habli mulka la yambaghi li ahadim min ba'di. Allah give me a kingdom and an empire that nobody else can have uh, anything of that nature in this world. And indeed, indeed. Uh, and that just reminds me of that other story that Allah speaks as well in the chapter 38, but maybe inshallah we'll discuss it further. Let's move on here with what follows in chapter 27 here. So for whom you za'un, they are restrained, meaning their volume, their numbers are so much. And then what happens furthermore? Verse 18, Hatta idha atau ala wadin naml. So Sulaiman alayhi salam with his entourage and his armies and uh, comprising of humans. And sometimes... Um, you get these grandparents, they're taking out the children, the grandchildren, the great-grandchildren, and there's this whole fun fair and event, and uh, the old man or the old lady will say, you know, we came, it was only two of us, and then we had 10 children, or we had 7 children, and then Allah blessed us with 27 grandchildren, and now Allah blessed us with 15 great-grandchildren, and we started our life as two. Uh, Allah says, وَمَا بَثَّ فِيهِمَا مِنْ it is Allah that has spread you out on the earth and it is Allah that will one day assemble and gather you. Yes, it was two of you and then it became ten with five kids or whatever and then so many grandchildren and great-grandchildren and then their partners and, and the rest of it. Subhanallah, Suleiman is moving. There's this whole presence of Jannat, one side. Then there's this whole human army. Then there's this whole bird's worth. Can, can you imagine the spectacle? Can you imagine the spectacle, right? One was the Qaruni Tariqah and one was the Sulaimani Tariqah. Qarun also came out with wealth, but it was only humans. But it was pom, glory, opulence, pride, arrogance, conceited, inflated, arrogant. No, no. This was humility. This was humble. This was amazing. I cannot begin to imagine the richness of the spectacle. وَحُشِرَ Sulaiman. وَحُشِرَ لِسُلَيْمَانَ جُنُودُهُ مِنَ الْجِنِّ وَالْإِنسِ وَالطَّيْرِ فَهُمْ يُوزَعُونَ So where do they pass by? Who do they cross? حَتَّى verse 18 حَتَّى إِذَا أَتَوْا عَلَى وَادِ النَّمْلِ Until they come by a valley of ants, a colony of ants. And this is why the chapter is known as Naml. تَسْمِيَةُ الْكُلْ بِإِسْمِ الْجُزْ The entire chapter is named behind one incident that features in that chapter. So Baqarah, in that entire chapter, Allah speaks about an incident pertaining to Baqarah. The whole chapter is not about Baqarah. Ankabut, chapter 29 in the Quran, the spider, in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, <coughs> Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that uh, the, 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 the powers, or the so-called powers in this world, they're just like a, like a spider's web, man. مَثَلُ الَّذِينَ اتَّخَذُوا مِن دُونِ اللَّهِ أَوْلِيَاءِ These people who you assume as your helpers and protectors, it's like a spider that spun its web. And you know even the nest of a bird is stronger than the web of a spider. And that's what Allah says, your strength is like a spider's web. If only they realize. These are the analogies, examples. We present it to people. But it is people of knowledge and wisdom that comprehend. May Allah make us from amongst those people that can comprehend and understand the analogies of the Quran. Ameen, Ya Rabbil Alameen. Okay, so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in uh, verse 18, حَتَّى إِذَا أَتَوْا عَلَى وَادِ النَّمْلِ 
Sulaiman alayhi salam and his entourage, they passed by a valley of ants. Qalat namla. Oh my word. I hope I can stimulate in you the excitement to study Quran, my brother and my sister. Because how much can I tell you in one episode? Hatta until I, I, I cannot begin to tell you the ecstasy and, and the euphoria that it gives me. Hatta idha atu ala wadin naml until when they came to the valley of ants or the colony of ants, qalat namla, one ant spoke. Now, you know how small it is. Now, again, you could see and the scholars have written and, uh, you know, you study animals, zoology and scientists and research that as small as the ant is, it is a very, very uh, disciplined creature. It has a lot of system in it. It has a lot of mutual network in it. It has a, a superior to whom they follow. It has planning, it has coordination, it has mutual support and structure. That, that it's, it's written, and I mean, I was just fascinated about how amazing this creature is. Suffice to say that Allah labels a chapter, and this is the beauty of the Quran. So the Quran is not a book on zoology, but in its scope of guidance, it incorporates it. It's not a book on astronomy, but in its scope of guidance, it incorporates astronomy. It talks about astronomy. It talks about the stars and how people navigate. So it's not there to tell you animals. It's not, but it will give you a lesson from everything. My word, how can this be man-made? La ilaha illallah. This is just deep. Wa inna lakum fil anami la ibra. There's so much for you to learn from an animal. Nusrikum mima fi butuniha min bayni farthi wa damin. Just look at the cow and look at the cattle and look at the milk that you consume. We give you Lebanon sa'iran li sharibin. Sa'iran palatable, wholesome, beautiful uh, milk. Min bayni farthi wa damin. Between the dung and between the blood. Between two impurities, we allow for the flow of clean, wholesome, pure milk to come, which is one of the most wholesome drinks of, of humans. What did our Habib وسلم, teach us when we drink milk? Allahumma barik lana fihi wa zidna min. Allah give us blessings in it and give us more of it. Wow, how wholesome is milk? How wholesome it is. Wa inna lakum fil anami, chapter 16, just 14. My brother, my brother, my sister. You know, Shaykh al-Hind, rahmatullah alayhi, said, فَكَّرْتُ وَفَكَّرْتُ وَأَنَا فِي السِّجْنِ لِمَاذَا نَرَى الْمُسْلِمِينَ أَلْيَوْمْ أَصْبَحُوا فِي دِينِهِمْ صَاغِرِينَ Why has the Muslims fallen so low? مَا الَّذِي صَيَّرَهُمْ إِلَى هَذَا الدِّمَارِ الْإِجْتِمَاعِ Why have they lost their clout and their muscle? Why is the wind out of their sails? He said, I gave... You know, prolonged thought to this. And I've arrived at two conclusions. Number one, Hajruhum al-Quran wa shiqaquhum fi ma baynahum. Because globally, uh, the Ummah has abandoned the Quran. And internally, the Ummah is fragmented. Two things have destroyed this Ummah. They've left the Quran, so they don't have a moral compass. Number two, internal bickering has fragmented them. Okay, verse 18, حَتَّى إِذَا أَتَوْا عَلَى وَادِ النَّمْلِ And honestly, I try and limit myself, but I cannot just tell you the beauty of Quran. So they come to a valley of ants, a colony of ants. قَالَتْ نَمْلَ And ant said. Now again, oh my word. Uh, so there's Arabic grammar here, and there's a question here. Was this ant a masculine ant or a female ant? Yes, this features in the tafsir. Now, you know, I, I, I have an eye for wildlife. In certain animals, it's quite pronounced, the bull from the calf or the male from the female. But in certain animals, it's quite difficult. Your zebra, um, your, your zebra, your giraffe, uh, it's, it's, you know, some way it would be more dark, more clearer, etc. Some places, the, 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 the organs will be loudly distinguished uh, from male and female. But sometimes it's quite difficult to make it out. And even... Uh, you know what, um, uh, um, a person who is uh, a keen hunter or uh, uh, into wildlife or a safari, uh, you know what, uh, avid uh, safari goer, even he would have his challenges to, to, to find out exactly what is the gender here. So it's mentioned in Madarik al-Tanzil and even in Nafhatul Arab that Qatada once came to Kufa. So he said to the people, Saluni amma shi'tum, ask me whatever you want to. Imam Abu Hanifa at that time was Ithna Ashar. He was 12 years old. Imam Abu Hanifa said, let me ask you, in Surah An-Naml, chapter 27, right, verse 18, Allah says, Qalat Namla, uh, the ant spoke. Was that ant that the Quran references, was it masculine or, 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 or feminine? Now, 
the, the complexity of the whole thing is Namlatun has a ta. The ta commonly is known as a symbol of feminine. But here this is ta'i wahdat. This is ta'i wahdat. Because the word namlatun in Arabic is like the word hamama, which is for pigeon, or shatun. One word is used for both male and female. There's no different noun that distinguishes male and female. Uh, but rather, it is the verb that precedes it that will dictate whether a, a male is been referenced or a female. Qalat namla. And when Sayyidina Imam Abu Hanifa asked this question, for afham. Uh, he, he, he was uh, startled, he was dumbstruck, he was lost for words, he's like, oops, I asked them to ask me any question, and the first one, it was like middle stump, I'm gone here, and then Imam Abu Hanifa said, it was a female, because the verb preceding the noun indicates qalat namla, my word, oh, this is Quran, this is Quran, qalat namlatun, so this N said, to the fellow ends. Ya ayyuhan namlud khulu masakinakum. O ants, uh, enter your dwellings. And here again we learn, the scholars tell us, the communication that the Quran conveys which Sayyidina Sulaiman intercepted through his comprehension was a very dignified co co communication. It was a communication of the will uqul, like how humans would speak to humans. It was very respectful engagement and talk. You know, sometimes you overhear children talking, I'm the doctor, you the nurse and the patient, and then, hello, hi, you are most welcome. Okay, please, uh, can you refer to our reception to settle the account? And you're like, oh my word, you know what? Guard your ears when, guard your lips when children are listening, for children repeat the things they hear. Let no ugly tone be heard, no careless talk, no angry word, for it is a gracious sin to mar the innocent. Language vulgar or unkind leaves its mark upon the mind, so let your speech be wise and mild in the presence of a child. Like you clueless of how they're picking up every detail. Um, do you accept debit cards? And you just sit in there and you're showing eyes to one another, like, listen to this one here. Um, okay, I'll pay half cash. And I'm like, wow, what's this? So Sulaiman is listening to this whole thing playing out. Ya ayyuhan naml, O ants, udkhulu masakinakum, enter your dwellings. La yahtimannakum Sulaiman, la yahtimannakum Sulaiman. Let it not be that Sulaiman and his armies crush you. Wahum la yashurun. And they won't even realize they're crushing you because they're so mighty and you're so insignificant. And in Bayanul Quran it is written, look at the intellect and the wisdom of this end. In that is the indication of the adoption of respect. So when the end communicated to the fellow ends in its colony to enter the dwellings, alerting them to the mighty presence of the entourage of Sulaiman, it did so in cognizance of the respect and the necessary decorum afforded to Sulaiman. He will crush you, he will crumble you, but he won't even realize it. So it's not going to be deliberate, it's not going to be malicious, it's not going to be premeditated, it's not going to be intentional, but they're so huge, they're so amazing, and they might just walk and crush you. So listen, take shelter, take cover. The ants respond and they go into their dwellings. Let's wait and see what unfolds.